Okay, all right. I'm trying to make a point. I'm, I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to do it this way. Just give me a second. Give me a second. I want to play something. Hey, yo, sir. But remember, only you can watch it through Showtime Pay Per View, July 12th. Gracias. Thank you very much for having us. Gracias, Lara. Gracias, Canelo. Thank you very much, LA. East LA, Boyle Heights, Woo! everyone, thank you very much for showing up. It is amazing and incredible the attention this fight is receiving. Why? Why is it receiving so much attention? This is a fight, this is a fight that yes, can be possibly the fight of the year. Because you have Lara on one side who is the champion, who nobody wants to fight. Nobody wants to fight because he's dangerous. This fight here. I can't, I can't, I can't do it anymore. I can't do it anymore. What happened to selling the fight? Well, you know, guys like Don King, you know, when you got a promoter, and I'm sorry, Oscar, I'm not just talking about you in general, but what happened to, like I said, selling the fight? I'm not saying that the fighters or the promoters got to act like jackasses, but still, if you're a boxing promoter, I feel, you know, if, you, if it's your star boxers, you should know their records by heart. You shouldn't have to read off of a card. You know, if you didn't know that that, that was that, that was Sewell Canelo, El Cineman Alvarez versus Iris Landy, the American Dream, Laura, 19-2 and two, with two draws and 12 knockouts. If you didn't know that, if you don't know that by heart and you're the boxing promoter and this is a big fight, it's like, what were you doing the night before? You know, maybe it's just me because there's stuff like that that I that I pay attention to. But if you don't know, Jay Z, Rock Nation, is now a boxing promoter, or they're now promoting fights. They won a purse bid for the WBO. Had ordered Peter Kid Chocolate Quillen versus uh, Matt Vay Korobov, and it's going to happen in either DC or NYC. But the news is this. Peter Quillen and Korobov is getting a career high payday because top rank bid something like five hundred thousand. Um, uh, Golden Boy bid something like a like a I think like a million. I forgot. The long story short, Rock Nation put down one point nine million, almost two million dollars. So with a seventy five twenty five split, um, Quillen is getting just a little over one point four million. You know, career high payday. More than more than Iris Lindelar got for fight so open the law for us. Let's listen to some more of this crap. Para expresarse y decir unas palabras eh, de parte de Showtime, eh, mi amigo uh, Chris de Blasio. Chris. I want to listen to him. Look, you can tell this is suit. You can tell he in a suit. Just listen to him talk. Yo hablo muy poquito español. My apologies. Uh, good afternoon, my name is Chris de Blasio, and uh, Steven Espinoza, our head of sports programming at Showtime, couldn't be here You can today. just tell he in a suit, can't you? But listen, what, what, what I'm trying to point out is, promoters, I think, that, I think that it's time for these old guys to go. You know, and I'm not saying that, you know, just, just force them out of the sport. I'm saying that the sport needs new, new promoters, new big-name promoters that are actually introducing these fighters to... Um, Becoming, how can I put it? Not, we don't want these fighters to 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 be doing reality TV shows and all that shit. But I'm talking about fighters becoming more of celebrities. You know, getting a guy like uh, Peter Quillen a sneaker deal. You know, and sending him. You know, I mean, I don't know. You know, have him at the ESPY Awards and BET. You know, hell, call up TMZ, have him follow him around. You know, I'm, I'm just like I'm I'm just giving examples. I'm not saying that they're realistic examples, but what I'm trying to say is. The boxers need to be marketed more. You know, when you have a press conference, you're, you're selling the fight in my life. From what I understand, you're introducing the fight. You know, when you're talking about, you know, you're selling the fight. So when you got, you know, promoters reading off of cards and they don't, you know, know the names and, it's thinking, and it makes you think like, well, what if this is somebody who don't know who these two fighters are? Why would they want to watch this fight? You got a press conference outside, right? You got a press conference outside. Why is the cars riding by not stopping? 
wise people are like, oh, what the hell is going on over there? I don't know if you don't know, T Street Controversy, this is T Street Controversy Live. I have, I have a dream that I'm close to accomplishing. I'm going to become a boxing promoter. So, what that means is it's relatively easy. $10,000 deposit, you get the license. You know, that, that, that enables you to be able to get a referee, you know, get all the drug testing done, you know, um, the fees, ambulance, and all that. Basically, you can, you know, here, I'm a boxing promoter, I want to rent out this venue. You know, you put the head of fighters, you know, put the money down for the venue, you know, and voila, put on an event. Now, I'm not saying that I'm going to be coming out of the gates on pay-per-view. No, my goal is to put on 200, 300, 500 people with an event, small. You know, I, I, I confidently, I, I feel like I confidently get 200 people right now to go to one of my fights. $25 a ticket, you know, and I'm being generous, you know, and what I would do is right now, my foundation is being myself and covering boxing while I'm being myself, some people say you're a very charismatic character, you're a funny dude, but all my videos are live and uncut, so I'm thinking I'm just talking regular, but I'm building from the outside in, you know, instead of being some rich guy that's going to get all the, that, you know, you know, that's going to get the promoter's license and get the boxers and all that. I'm building, like, a foundation of a, of a solid fan base of boxing fans that I also, you know, do a service as far as educating. So if it's fights that they can't watch, you know, or you can't watch, then I watch them and I do a video on them and tell you, like, oh, man, yeah, dudes all right or dudes not. But... What I'm doing is, I'm building the people first. So then, when I do get the license, and even if I don't even put on a fight for a year, I know that I can put on a fight. I know that one each state I can go to, you know, especially if I go overseas, I can put on fights overseas. You know, but I'm talking about in the, um, in the East Coast area. I'm talking about DC, you know, trying to save AC, I guess. You know, um, Philly, of course. You know, I'm going to try to put Philly back on the map when it comes to boxing. And I'm talking about putting on, you know, tournaments. You know, but that's within the five-year plan. But like I said, if you don't understand the plan, let me tell you, listen. It's, I, don't, I don't plan on just being on YouTube. It's not. It's not. No. I'm sick and tired of this box. The only reason why I'm still in this box, stuck in this box, is because I had to wait for something. And that's something is only two days away. One year of being 97.3% sober. So, now, after August the 21st, I can go through the next part of my phase, and as you see, if you have not noticed, I have aligned myself with a very credible website, Real Combat Media. People, I'm, I'm not really in. I understand what people are going to say right now. I'm not interested in having a website. And believe me when I tell you that it is only me doing all this. I am understaffed. I, listen, there's so much work that got to be done. But see, it's been 21 days since um, I branched out on my own. And um, I have my own soul boxing channel. And just getting the channel started you know I had to make sure I got everything you know done thoroughly before I started doing videos so all I can do all I have to do is just do videos and I can do them comfortably you know so now you know we got our um we got our um affiliate contract with Social Blade thank you Social Blade got the um um let me tell you what that does so people don't understand what that does is um How can I put it? You get better advertising and also your your videos are better marketed if you do a good job. There's a reason, you know, why my videos pop up, you know, as soon as you type something in. That's not me. You know, you think I can do that shit on two channels? People always want to say, oh, he's doing something. No, oh, that shit, you know, it's just that I have a fan base and with what I do, will always generate a lot, uh, a, a large amount of people. You know, I'm right there live immediately after the fight. So it's just traffic. 
So, what I'm saying is that, you know, we got the exclusive contract, the same one I had over on Into the Arena. Got the website. You know, uh, the press passes and all that is coming with the website. I got that interview coming up. Remember, I was supposed to have an, I was supposed to have an interview over on Into the Arena, but what happened with that, if you don't remember, Into the Arena went to the uh, weigh-in for Danny Garcia versus Ron Salka. Um, they got the interview with uh, Zab Judah versus Lamont Peterson, but if you didn't really understand what was going on, that trip was for me. So, of course, they went along with plans, which I don't blame them, you know, and Don did what he had to do because Don can do interviews, and he went along with it. So now, you know, I had to make sure I get everything off the ground, and right now, I'm going to try to get this interview this Friday. What's this Friday? The 22nd. You know, I'm going to try to get this interview this Friday, the 22nd. Right now, it's the 20th. And um, so, what does that take care of? Got the website, got the uh, official YouTube contract, press passes. Um, also, with the website, there'll be access to uh, media calls, you know, and um, in November, I'm in planning because remember, like I said, I was supposed to go to Danny Garcia versus Salka, going to um, Hopkins versus Kovalev because it could be his last fight. So, involving that, this is what I'm going to do. It may be an AC. Now, if it's an AC, I'm hoping it's an AC. You know, I'll stay the whole weekend. So, you know, what I'll do is I'll go there Thursday, go to the final press conference. You know, I'll go to the weigh-in on Friday. You know, I'll go to the, um, you know, I'll go to the fight. You know, then I'll go to the post-fight press conference. And what I'm, and what I want to do is, I want to provide something different, which is going to, which is going to be difficult because I gotta have the best internet access possible. See, what I want to do is, if I go to a press conference, right, immediately after the press conference, you know, I do a video and tell y'all, basically, just summarize everything that happened in the press conference, while also recording and uploading the actual press conference. So, same thing with the weigh-in. I'll go to the weigh-in, do my weigh-in videos, and then upload the actual weigh-in video, you know, and do the video summarizing it. And then with the fight, see, I don't, I don't have any interest in going to fights. I don't have any interest in going to fights. You know, I know you're probably saying no. I, unless I have a unless I have a station where I can have my laptop, my phones, you know, and all my stuff like when I can actually work and you know, like I don't want to be sitting there just watching the fight and then having a, you know, nah, it's not, it's not what I want to do. It's not, it's, no, I can't do it. I can't do it. Now, as far as being a boxing promoter, if you know, you know, of course I'm for the theatrics and all that. I'm not saying turn boxing into the fucking WWE. I'm saying tell fighters like be yourself. Like yo, if you wanna if you wanna say you're gonna beat him the fuck up, go ahead. Tell me you're gonna beat him the fuck up. You know, and I and, and I'm not saying, you know, act I'm not encouraging to act like a dickhead. I'm just saying be yourself. Like if dudes say some stuff, you know, I'm just put I'm I'm put I'm just put out two fighters. Let's say and I'm just gonna name the randomest fighters that's not even the same weight class. Let's say if Robert Hellenius and Ricky Burns was to fight. Hey, and I'm and I'm promoting the fight. And you got Ricky Burns sitting there quiet, but you got Robert Hellenius talking all this shit. I'm gonna look at Ricky Burns like, yo, you gonna let him talk to you like that? Especially if it's a rival promoter. Like that's the type of promoter I'm gonna do. Like I'm gonna start shit. You know, like I'll even like if it was Floyd Mayweather, like if, if I was promoting Floyd, you know, or promoting Madonna, if I was promoting Madonna. You know, and I was managing him solely now without him and a golden boy. I would I would say, yo, Nelly, Miss Jackson, I got these tickets for you, homie. You know, like that's the type of stuff I would do. I know you're probably thinking, you know, but still my goal is to sell fights. You gotta capture this younger generation. And this younger generation is all over social media. Social media for me has become a job to the point where from the hours of like eight AM to about two PM, I'm just on social media just talking to people and oh god. But with this younger generation, guys like guys like 50 Cent, you know, he burnt a couple bridges, you know, before he even got into the business, you know, before he even got his license. Um, guys like him, you know, guys like, uh, uh, of course, Jay-Z, that's the future of promoters, you know, you know, I mean, God bless his heart, but Bob Behrman gonna be around forever, Bob Behrman like a hundred anyway, he's like a hundred now, 
So when you look at guys like Eddie Hearn, you know, and I'm just naming some names, you know, just that you, you should know. You know, Eddie Hearn, you know, Jay-Z and 50 Cent. That's young blood right there. And if you think about it, they're capable of putting on bigger fight. You know, Rock Nation, from my understanding, they want to turn, they, they want to help the fighters um, be known on celebrity status. Simple as that. They want to help the fighters be known on celebrity status, my bad. And what that means is that fighters going to have to be, you know, going to more things. For example, like Peter, like Peter Quill and it's like, you know, I have him on ESPN every week or something like that. You know what I'm talking about? Like as a, a special guest commentator, you know, I'd be sending these fighters certain places. You know, I'm not saying Al Heyman is not doing all this stuff, but he's got a lot of fighters, man. You know, and then... When you think about like how are these guys selling the fights? They're selling the fights off of um off of off of these nasty press conferences. Listen to this crap. The most compelling fighters on the planet today, at only 23 years old, uh, he's had a professional career since 2005. He's won the WBC uh, junior middleweight title in 2011. He defended it 11 times. He has victories over Austin Trout. He did beat Alfredo Angulo. He was in the mega event September 13th against Floyd Mayweather Jr. And now he came. Why would anyone want to listen? Did that sound like a fight you want to go to? Listen to Oscar De La Hoya up there, where you know no type of energy in his voice or nothing. Does this sound like selling a fight? You know, like the press conference is for people to see and be like, oh, this is really going to be good. You know, instead what they're doing is they're selling fights with these graphics and this digital mumbo jump off. <laughs> you know, they expect people just to buy the fights. Floyd Mayweather, even though I hate it or love it, you know, and I hate it. And one day I hope to find out like, if it's all a gimmick or not. He's always, he always makes sure he's relevant in social media. Even if it's at the cost of saying he fucked your bitch. <laughs> like, like he will always make sure he stay relevant like in media. So, and that sells, that sells his fights. Because as soon as he start getting, you know, you know, name not in the media enough. You know, he released a controversial tweet. You know, or he would put, you know, like a, like a, 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 a Israel hat on. You know, or he would sit there, you know, put the, put the towel on. Like he's, like he's Jesus. I'm T Street Controversy. This is T Street Controversy Live. You know what I'm gonna do? It's like this. I got a couple months left. Because I can't, it's not, it's a situation where I can't fail anymore. You know, I failed many times in life, even though I had some massive successes. I failed so many times to the point where I'm close. You know, and, and, and to get close, you gotta really, really, really go through some shit. But that's a whole different story. But what I'm gonna say is this, listen, I know the hoodies gotta go, I know the hats gotta go. You know, I'm dropping pounds as we speak. I haven't done laundry in God knows how long, and that was pointed out to me. There's so much stuff I still got to do. But major changes have to take place. You know, it's, 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 it's about more than just doing these videos. So what I'm saying to you is I'm solely 100% in control. And what I'm saying by that is that I got I to accept all blame for things I am doing and and I have not done or will not do. So like I said, give me a couple months and until then, you know, just realize this channel was brand spanking new and it took a whole lot of work to get it done in this in such this short period of time. So T Street Controversy, T Street Controversy love.